Hello, Sid. Hey, Nolan. We have the whole team here, including three new people that I'd like to just introduce very quickly before we dive into the questions. Uh, Gabrielle, Daniel, and Bonnie. You wanna wave a quick hello and maybe say, say, say hi to Sid? Hi, Sid, this is Daniel. Nice to meet you. Hello, this Hello, is Sid. Bonnie. Nice to meet you, Sid. Likewise. Hello, Sid. This is Gabriel. I have the feeling I know some of you already due to the videos you sent. Thank you. And Sid, I, I love that you're channeling 1984. Uh, great to see we're, we're back in the future here. Back to the future. Yeah. Um, Justin, would you like to kick us off with the first question, please? Love to. Are we, uh, should, we, should we live stream this or what, uh, what are you thinking, Nolan? Uh, we're recording. If you'd prefer to live stream, I'm okay with that. Are you going to uh, upload it later or the, the, start, the start will be a bit? Um, I haven't done that. Let, just so that I don't spend time now figuring out, out exactly how to do that, um, I, I'm happy to upload it later if you'd like. Uh, yeah, I think like I think you should think like free content, yay! Great. I, you know what I'm thinking is free content, yay! <laughs> great. <laughs> uh, great. Let's. Uh, so, um, welcome to our Q and A with uh, with Sid. Um, Justin, would you like to kick us off with our first question? Excellent. Uh, this this question is inspired by the exciting fact that Nolan is going to be on a, a podcast later today. I was curious um, if if Double GDP, the partnerships team, was to play a thought leader role in the city building space. Um, like, what what recommendations, advice would you give us? What are the technology adjacent areas that we should quote unquote get smart on? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't uh, I don't know. I do know that. All of this kind of new city stuff is kind of hard to figure out. So I think uh, Charter Cities Institute is doing a great job. Um, I think that uh, if it depends on your goals, if you want to create uh, awareness tying into the current news, sometimes it's super helpful. So I, uh, seeing the situation in Afghanistan, it's hard not to think about the refugee cities initiative that some people had. Um, and and um, I saw that Mark had a great note about, about that. Yeah, he had a great note. So that we have sometimes to be a thought leader, you just echo all the smart things people say. Um, And um, what also comes to mind is like the, the, the various housing crises around the world, like both like in California and in the Netherlands, like housing prices are going up at a very unsustainable pace and pricing a lot of people out of the market. So you could also consider tying into that. Mm. I think the, the core problem is it's super great to live next to a million other people, but everyone is going for the same for the same cities. It would be kind of nice if there's new cities to go to, which are a lot more affordable. Great, thank you. I particularly liked echoing that we should be echoing other smart people and that you know it's super great to live next to a million people but even better when there are affordable options around there yeah i think like basically what we're solving is our coordination problem um how do you how do you get a million people to kind of move around the same time because no one wants to live in a city with 10 other people if there's a million people there's great uh amenities and and uh that it is likely to be, be vibrant and have lots of options. So, that, so the trick is how do you how do you coordinate that? 
it's almost, uh, almost like a group purchase, you know, like the original thesis of Groupon, where you, if everyone commits, then we all move at the same time. Um, there's uh, there's something there's something to that. Well, well, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think that's actually a great transition to my next question, um, which is if you are in the space of the, the city entrepreneur, if you're so trying to solve this coordination problem and you have two years, and it's a little bit of a self-serving question, but if you have two years to prepare and learn um, in the absence of a, of a YC for cities, like how would you spend that time um, learning? Yeah, so suppose I, I couldn't just start, which probably is the best way to do it. Um, I would, um, so, so the hard thing is, and I, I think it ties nicely into the previous one, the hard thing is getting a million people to move. So um, you got to figure out, like based on, uh, you, you got to figure out like where are you going to build it? Um, what are the, the pros and cons? Um, and then kind of build a differentiated brand. Like you're, most people live in a city for kind of by, almost by coincidence. But if you're going to get people to move somewhere, especially if they're, if it's kind of not great to begin with, it's more like starting a movement and you're much more likely to kind of get people to move if you're opinionated about what's, what's going to be there. So this city will be, for example, much more affordable. So it, it allows people who can't get a house right now to get a house or it allows for easy immigration. People who cannot move to another country are able to move to another country. And it allows for great security. You can leave your house unlocked or it allows for uh, certain biotech regulations or, or, or medicine regulations like the right to try or it allows for a walkable city like cul-de-sac or it allows for kind of a much more vibrant cultural sector um, or like all of the above, but you, you gotta be kind of, you, you gotta paint a picture and then allow people to opt in. And a lot of the work will probably be marketing. And then hopefully at the end of the two year, you have one and a half million people who put a thousand dollar down that they're actually gonna move there. And then and then you start kind of, then you can start the process of, of moving them there. But to, to get, let's say 2 million people to sign up with a thousand dollars, you probably need to reach hundreds of million of people. So probably you also want to, you want to not just be opinionated, but, and, and paint a very, um, kind of compelling vision, but also make it interesting enough uh, that it gets picked up and talk, talked about by people. All right. Thanks so much for that answer, Sid. I think it also echoes one of my favorite thinkers in this space, this Ed, Ed Glazier, who talks about the rise of, of consumer cities, at least and historically, you know, city agglomeration has been strictly based on economic cities, economic reasons, like the desire to find a job. But now um, folks are choosing things for like, you know, biotech regulations and security and walkability. Uh, so, so thanks very much for the answer, Ed. Um, that, that yeah. resonates well. I think if you look, then some cities are kind of becoming part of an identity. Um, like I'm, I'm very proud to live in Silicon Valley. It's like being, being kind of a tech entrepreneur is part of my identity and I'm part to live in the tech capital of the world. Um, so I, I think you see, you see cities rising as, as kind of being part of an identity, a role that maybe previously was um, 
you see the decline of like religion as a, as a way to form identity and the rise of cities. And I think that's gonna, as people get become more mobile, that's gonna become much more important. And I think that with the new city is that you can make it much more explicit because people opt in, like they, they don't have to move to your new city. I love that. Great. Thank you. Thanks for asking, Susie. Uh, hello, Sid, and hello, everyone. Um, so my question um, was, how can we remain a customer centric company uh, as we get more CTs on board uh, who may have different uses and expectations from the app? Yeah, it's the, if you have one city as a customer, you can just kind of build whatever they want. And if you get more of them, you have to make sure that you build something that is much more like what they want. And sometimes there's also a big difference because what they say they need and what they actually need. And there's a lot of translation in between. Um, so that takes a lot of great product management, a lot of great customer success to roll it out. And also some, sometimes a little bit of compromise where maybe you, you do have two ways of doing things um, for, for a while. But the more, and the, the, the thesis of double GDP is that we built great software for new cities. Um, and that means we can't have, if we have 10 cities, we can't have 10 ways of doing things. It is, it is gonna be a bunch of best practices that we give you. And that's also why we're starting with new cities. So we don't have to replicate what was done before, but we can do a thing that makes sense now that it's software enabled. It's um, when you had uh, software like SAP and you automated manufacturing, the old way of doing it is was take the existing process and try to adjust SAP mm -hmm. and it kind of failed most of the time. The new way was like, hey, there's a lot of good practices built into the software. Let's adopt that to the extent we can. I think by focusing on new cities, that's much more you're much more likely to get their client to go along with that, but that doesn't mean it's easy. Okay, thank you. Um, then my second question was about um, if you think that uh, the scope of what we do uh, with and for new CDs will ever go beyond just software, and is there any other ways you think that we could support new CD growth? Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, I think we already did, right? For and Kwashi, we have a newsletter that we that we maintain. We have artists in residence. We have hackers in residence. We have staff in residence. So I think I think it's much more than just uh, just software. And I think any any as a startup, you you should care about the goal. You should care less about how you do it. And of course, it's great to be enabled by software because it's very scalable and it's uh, it, uh, high margins will allow for high growth. Uh, but in the end, the goal matters. And we've been very pragmatic on how to, how to get there, including non-software approaches. Okay, thank you. Hi, Sid. So this, uh, this question comes uh, hot off the heels of uh, a, a question that Nicholas posed at our, um, at our strategy conversation earlier today uh, about what if we had a free tier and, um, and you know, would that help with new city acquisition and might there be a lot of opportunities that we're not even seeing today from the way that we're approaching the market? So there's a little bit of that context. Um, the, the way that I thought of asking the question is, is more around uh, GitLab's journey and how its free tier has contributed to the company growth. Um, it's you know, customer acquisition speed, what challenges did it present to upsell paid versions? Um, but then of course, thinking about like, are there ways that you see that this might parallel um, and uh, help us serve potential new cities? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, I think that um, 
there's a, there's a, a book that's kind of in vogue right now in Silicon Valley, product led growth, um, which I still have to read. But I assume it talks about things like that as, this as well. I think a free tier is a great way to kind of discover new uh, customers. Um, I think what was surprising about uh, the recent visit to of, of, of you to Africa is that we uncovered customers that we weren't that aware of beforehand. So I think the, the tricky part is, can people be successful with the software without any kind of customer support? I'm not quite sure. Um, also, it reduces your kind of um, your take rate. Like you now have this free tier, and you have to kind of your your ability to kind of you, you're giving away that value, and now there's less value. Um, your total price basically goes down if you give some part of it away for free. Um, which kind of makes intuitive sense, right? If you give, I don't know, half away for free, your your price goes down by by half. Um, but I I think it it's a very interesting thing to consider for double GDP. First of all, we can afford as a as a company to have a super long term outlook. Right now, our core metric is citizens and not revenue, so it would it would uh, it would be compatible with that. And I think, I think there's functionality, like for example, gate access, that is kind of the first thing every city wants and that there's not a good free option for. And I think we have a decent product there that you can kind of start using without a ton of onboarding. So I can, uh, I can totally see that case. And the advantage is like you get you get in touch with your customer, you get the contact info, and you don't have to kind of keep figuring out which every new development in the world is. Great. Well, thank you very much, Sid. Uh, appreciate your time. And I think that's all the questions that we have for today. It was super fun. Thanks for the great questions. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.